Hello. This talk will cover some of the ways of sending data from your C++ program running on the CPU to uh, shader programs that are running on the GPU, on the graphics processing unit. Uh, we won't cover all possible ways. In particular, we won't talk about textures or other types of buffers. But we will, however, cover vertex attributes and uniform variables. So of this type, there's three ways I want to discuss. Three ways. send data to the shader program. And number one is to do per vertex vertex attributes. So a vertex attribute means a data value that's associated with a particular vertex. Uh, say the node of a triangle, the vertex corner of a triangle and so on. And these are stored in the VBO. Uh, the VAO tells where to find the stuff in the VBO, but the data itself is in the VBO. And in particular, it's generally different values, or can be different values, for each vertex in the VBO. So we have a, the VBO holds a big array of data. Uh, each vertex has its own data value stored in the VBO. The second way is the so-called generic vertex attributes. Uh, these are not stored in the VBO, and in fact, they stay the same. These values are still values associated with the vertices, but they stay the same for all the vertices given in a single GL draw command. So this is the same. These are the same values for all vertices. in a single GL draw command. In particular, uh, we will usually use either GL draw arrays or GL draw elements. So then just talk about those, GL draw elements. And these values are set, they're given to the VAO, and they're set, and they don't change. And, but they can change between calls to GL draw arrays or GL draw elements. And the third kind are what are known as uniform variables. Uh, these are also the same for all vertices in a single GL draw call. So some differences here, the values of type 1 and 2 Uh, these are the vertex attributes. They're available only for use by the vertex shader. So they can be accessed only by the vertex shader. So typically a shader program will consist of both a vertex shader and a fragment shader. And But only the vertex shader has access to the vertex attributes, that is, the type 1 and the type 2 things. On the other hand, uniform values, these are the things of type 3, these are can be accessed by both the vertex shader and the fragment shader. So it's, it's traditional to use things like model matrix and uh, projection matrix are often made available as uniform variables, e.g. the model view matrix or the projection matrix. We will talk more about these as we get into it, are often uniform values. Because sometimes the um, uniform variables. Because sometimes the fragment shader actually wants to use these matrices for transformations, such as when we get the long lighting and so on. So, just to list briefly the OpenGL commands that are used to access these things, we'll, uh, and then I'll show you some sample code.
So for the per vertex vertex attribute, we use the following commands in our OpenGL program. We use gl line buffer to select a VBO, and then we use gl buffer data to load data into a VBO. So together, these things load vertex attributes into a VBO. But we also use um, GL vertex attrib pointer. I think that's attrib is short for an attribute. So this uh, essentially tells the VAO or lets the VAO store the information about what vertex attributes are in the VBO and where they are in the VBO. Okay, and then we also use GAL enable vertex attribute array, vertex attrib array, to um, to basically this this enables or turns on the use of per vertex, enables the use of data from the VBO. So that's how, these are the most relevant C++ commands that we use for specifying per vertex, vertex attributes. For generic attributes, we use, well, we use GL disable vertex attrib array. This is actually the default setting. By default, the it's we do not store the data in the VBO. But if we are store, if we are switching between storing the data in the VBO and then not storing the data in the VBO, we call GL disable vertex attrib array to undo the effect of GL enable vertex attrib array. And but more importantly and more commonly, we use VL vertex attrib. Uh, I'll use 3F, there's different options here, to set a generic vert, generic attributes value. So remember the generic attributes are the same for a single call to a GL draw arrays or GL draw elements. So before we make such a call, we would call GL vertex a trib 3F. This is the the 3F is for three floats, 3F, three floats. Uh, that's for setting a vector of length three uh, values. So for instance, maybe a color or something like that, RGB values. And so rather than storing the data in the VBO like we did for the pervert text data, we just explicitly set the data by a call to the C++ function, OpenGL C++ function, GL vertex at trip 3F. And then um, for a uniform, variables. There are several commands that are, are used. The most relevant one is, I'll do it for the matrices. There's various commands. They all start with the words GL uniform. The one for setting a matrix would be matrix FV. V stands for vector. We're sending a vector of values. Uh, they're floats. Matrix means a three by three, sorry, a four by four matrix. This sets the 16 values in a 4x4 four four matrix uh, in column order. In other words, we specify the elements of a 4x4 four four matrix by giving going down the columns, first column, second column, third column, fourth column, total of 16 numbers. GL uniform matrix FB just takes a pointer to an array of 16 floats and loads those in as the current value of the uniform variable that goes to that matrix. 
We all also need to use earlier, at least once, we have to call GL uniform location. Oh, I'm sorry, GL get uniform location. And this is just to get the number or the location number of the uniform variable. To get the location number of the uniform variable. Um, vertex attributes have location numbers as well. That's a different set of location numbers. And the location number is how the vertex shader links to the values from the C++ program. Uniform variables have a dynamically allocated location number, at least in the most commonly used versions of OpenGL. And so we actually have to get it each time we run the program, because it could be different every time you run the program. But these are the relevant commands. I'm going to now switch to the computer and uh, show you briefly how these things are used in a functioning C++ OpenGL program. So first we'll look at the Simple Draw Modern program and how it uses vertex attributes that are per vertex as well as generic. So let's uh, scroll down a little bit to find where it sets up the data for the points. Uh, there's three points. There's um, a lot of comments here, but we'll just scan past them. We first set up a array in the C++ program with the position data for the points. We call GL bind vertex array to select the VAO. We call GL bind buffer to select a VBO. We call GL buffer data to load the position data from the array three verts into the buffer. We then call GL vertex a trib pointer, giving it vert pause loc as the name of the, uh, or the location number for the per vertex data. And we this is to tell the VAO where the data is stored in the VBO. And then GL enable vertex a trib array tells the VAO to actually use that data. It enables the use of the per vertex vertex attributes. Uh, you'll notice there's no mention in this code for the points about the other vertex attribute values, which are the color values. They are set on a per vertex basis for the overlapping triangles. So the overlapping triangles have a big array of values of both uh, both XYZ coordinates, the position of the vertices, and for color values. And the color values, you notice, aren't the same for all the vertices. They change. In other words, they're per vertex values, just like the position of per vertex values. Again, we call GL bind vertex array to select the VAO, GL bind buffer and GL bind buffer data to select the VBO and load all this data from the triangle verts array into the VBO. Then we call GL vertex a trip pointer twice, once for the vertex position using the parameter vert pause log, and the other for the vertex color using the parameter vert color log. And these two commands tell the VAO where to find these values as per vertex, vertex attributes in the VBO. And then we call GL enable vertex a trib array twice, once for vert pause log and once for vert color log, to tell, those are the location numbers again, to tell the VAO, the VAO to actually use those values from the VBO when rendering elements. So now if we scroll down a little bit more, here's first of all the triangles. And if you recall from just a moment ago, the triangles have, in the VBO, they've got both the Position, position data and the color data is per vertex vertex attributes. So all we do to render the triangles is we bind the VAO that corresponds to the triangles and we call GL draw arrays to render nine vertices as separate triangles. For the points, case five down here, we had only the position was in the array as per vertex data values. The color was not specified. So here, the color is a generic vertex color, so we call GL vertex a trib 3F with the parameter vert color lock to get a location number for the color, and we set its value to 1, 1 half, 1 tenth to set the red, green, val red, green, blue values to those. 
This gives a sort of orangish red color. And when we call GLDRAW arrays, it uses this generic color for all three vertices, and it uses the position data from the VBO for the pervertex data. So next we'll look at the Solar Modern program. So here's the Solar Modern program. The Solar Modern program uses the GLGOM sphere method to create the triangles for the spheres. So it doesn't do that explicitly. So the per vertex, vertex attributes are all encapsulated within the GLGOM sphere methods. But on the other hand, Solar Modern still uses generic vertex values for colors, and it uses, and what we're really interested here is the uniform variables for the matrices. So let's search for the word uniform here. Uh, first of all, right here, there's a variable name, uh, a pointer to a string. Model view map name is the name of the model view matrix as used in the GLSL code for the shader program. If you went to the shader source code, you'd see this was a variable name being used there, and it's declared as a uniform variable. So this is just the C++ program keeping track of that name. And then we use that value or here, we get the integer value model view map location by calling GL uniform location right on this line here, which takes the shader program we're going to be working with, shader program one, passes in the name of the uniform variable and gets as returned a location number, which is the, 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 the address, if you think of it that way, of the uniform variable. How do we use that to set uniform variables? Uh, here is where we render the sun. So we select the shader program. It's always shader program one. We have a linear map R4. That's a four by four matrix. It's named sun pause matrix. It's the same as what I called M sub S in one of the other online matrices. We make it equal to the view matrix, essentially placing the sun at the center of the scene. The sun pause matrix holds a four by four matrix. Uh, the entries are 16 double precision floating point numbers, or doubles, as they're called in C++. And OpenGL wants to have the matrix be floats instead of doubles. So we call the method dump by columns to get the entries of the matrix as an array of floats. Mat entries is a float of 16, uh, uh, an array of 16 floats. So this just dumps the values from sun pause matrix into that array. GL uniform matrix 4FV takes those 16 values and mat entries and stores them in the uniform variable with location number given by model view mat location. In other words, that's the matrix that serves as the model view matrix for the shader program. And there's also a call to GL trib 3F here to set the vertex color on the sun. And then sun.render, the render method calls the GL draw elements command to render the sun as a bunch of triangles. When they're rendered, the vertex attributes for color come from the generic uh, value given here in the GL vertex of trib 3F, and the uniform value of the matrix comes from the 16 values given by this call to GL uniform matrix 4FV. So rendering the Earth and the Moon are similar. We use different colors. We've changed the matrices for those calls, but otherwise it's exactly the same as this. So that finishes this presentation. Thank you very much.